Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and today I'm going to talk about Chasing Amy from 1997. So I'm sort of reviewing all the View Askew universe because it was sort of a big deal when I was a teenager, at least in terms of cinephilia and stuff like that. So, or indie filmmaking and everything that was going on. And I was very into it. And when I first saw this movie, I was in middle school and I actually thought I was going to be a super mature person. And I was like, I'm going to rent this. My parents were like, oh, what's this? This is a indie romantic comedy. Let's all, I don't know whose idea was it to watch it with my parents. I think it was mine because I thought I was a super mature person in the seventh, eighth grade. And they were not super thrilled at watching this with me in middle school. But uh, for understandable reasons, I remember they were like, well, this is a lot of profanity and not what I expect to watch with my middle school son. So props for them because they did sit through the whole movie. I will say that. The thing with this movie is um, when I first saw it, I was in middle school. And I think I sort of, because I had like no dating experience whatsoever, that um, it was more like watching older kids talk about sex and stuff. So it was really super cool and interesting at the time. But now I've been, you know, married for 10 years and have a kid and stuff. So my perspective has sort of radically changed on those things, relationships and dating and thinking Ben Affleck in his 20s was a cool person. So um, that... <laughs> Has, has shifted and reflecting back on it and I hadn't seen this film in a while because you, you get the impression it doesn't age well um it doesn't age well if that's what you're sitting there thinking like oh it ages in some ways it does but eh. this film is very much through a cis white guy perspective and for that to be about a lesbian woman falling in love with a man is sort of a major issue and this film does not portray homosexuality very well and I completely understand why people were really mad about this film at the time because Kevin Smith was enough of a name I mean he it didn't no one was sure where his career was going to go at that point but he could get this in front of a bunch of screens it did get more publicity more talk than most films than most gay cinema was getting at the time it really wasn't this really dominated the conversation of that that year and I can understand being like totally pissed off at this movie at the time and even now because of that one of the biggest things of this film which is about a guy Holden who uh, makes a comic called Blunt Man and Chronic with his friend Banky which is very successful he falls in love with a woman who also writes a comic book which name I should probably remember but don't he falls in love with her you knows she's a lesbian keeps hanging out with her they're very cute about one another but then he really is in love with her and they start a relationship and the problems ensue basically because he has problems with her very sexual past. Her past sexual experiences very much bother him. And the problems with how she comes from a different worldview than him, and they kind of butt heads over that and so forth. One of the things, and you can see this in Clerks, and this goes through at least his first three films, and I also wanna say anything I say about this film, to my understanding and everything I've heard even, Kevin Smith has grown from what this film was and his attitudes towards sexuality and homosexuality and all these things. I'm not really mad at him or anything like that. I think he, he seems like a nice guy. I've never met him. I mean, I met him once, but we don't, I'm sure he remembers it. But he has moved past this, has acknowledged that several times in various podcasts. I'm sure there's way too much of that for me to listen to, to go on about, but he has and so forth. This starts out with a thing that starts in clerks where you have that joke of like that his girlfriend's like 37 dicks and that like really bothers Dante. In this it's the same thing with Holden where Holden is upset to find out like his girlfriend has had all these past sexual experiences but I don't really get about that and when I was before I like dated anyone or had any sexual experiences I guess like that seemed more normal but I don't really agree with shaming someone because they've, you know, done certain things or had, you know, multiple partners at once or something like that. I don't agree with that whatsoever. And I don't understand his kind of hang up about that, which happens multiple times in these first three films, that this is like an issue. And I know this is based on his relationship with Joy Lauren Adams. I don't know what, because he brings it up, it makes you sort of think, with this film at least, it makes you think what happened there. I don't know, but I just don't agree with that sort of thing. And I understand the morals of this film is like, that was sort of stupid, which is great, actually. I, and I do think this film sort of does a bit of a, it's almost like a sex ed PSA for like, people in their 20s dressed up as an indie movie in certain cases because they have a lot of conversations 
about you know sexuality and like what bothers him and why that's like it really shouldn't bother you and trying to like push people into sexual experiences and and explaining homosexuality and i think that it has conversations that are healthy and i also think you know if someone needs to like sort of get something out and express it and deal with something through their art that's incredibly healthy and if you want to do that and like put it out there for the world i actually really encourage that you know i i really think that's a good positive thing actually and i think him making it for his own soul seemed to be a very positive thing but watching this now is different than that it's different what the artist needs and what i experience as an audience member and when i'm watching this movie the biggest sort of issue with it is not having sexuality changes like sort of natural and i think we're much more open to that now and in the 90s especially like you were straight you were straight your whole life you maybe experienced but that's about it um or you're gay your whole life or something like that roundabout ways sort of the 90s feeling on it. it's very conservative and this kind of gets into the issue of being a little more open about those things which i actually also think is very healthy they don't cover it in the best way um but also i think if you're going to have two characters in general this is like basic romantic comedy shit right here if you're going to have two characters get together you have to have us as the audience fall in love with them as like a couple and I don't know if we ever really got that. Like we see them play skee ball and he like basically mansplains skee ball to a girl, which is like, just like such a like college guy thing. You don't know skee ball, like uh, uh, this is a cool date, right? And it's like, no, it's not. That's it's a fucking skee ball, seriously. But it goes into a bigger issue with this is like most of the conversations he ha most of the conversations in general, this movie are about their relationship, but most of the conversations he has with his girlfriend are about their relationship which is not like normal to the extent that they talk about this which is why i think this is almost like an after school special or something i wish there were more scenes that weren't just montages which those montages are actually very strong of them like you know getting why they like each other i have like no fucking clue except for those montages and although that worked great when rocky's training and stuff it does not work for a romantic comedy and i think that's like a basic thing that this movie doesn't have is it should have had a dumb scene whether it's the lobsters in the kitchen and annie hall which is like a famous one i'm sorry i know everyone hates woody allen now but that's what i'm il illustrating works for that or even you know in promising a woman recently where they're dancing to a dumb paris hilton song it's like it it like reminds you of that feeling of love of falling in love over something like silly like joking around and how you know you want to be with that person or want to hang out with them more i didn't really get too much of that from this other than like he makes a lot of rude jokes in front of her he's like kind of stupid and then i don't really get why she likes him i'm gonna be honest <laughs> i like really don't get that at all like Ben Affleck with a goatee. I don't, is that hot for anyone? I don't, he never did it again. So I'm guessing not. That is like one of the weakest things about this film is Kevin Smith didn't make a film that's a romantic comedy really. He made a film about his own conservative views on sexuality, which I guess like if you look at it that way, sure but i just find it annoying when i watch a movie and they just talk about the relationship the whole time it's like how come you know while you were sleeping and do this better than you except i'm supposed to think you're better i guess because it's an indie movie i don't know it doesn't hold any water like julia roberts romantic comedies that i thought lesser of at the time were actually better at building these relationships and getting you to believe in the couple themselves which this movie definitely absolutely fails to do like it just doesn't do that it's mainly about that and this isn't carnal knowledge or something like that it's not that deep and i think that's the other thing is like this film maybe it's because i am sort of coming around on this as like someone who's in their teens to someone who's in their late 30s looking at this whole argument but this film smells of like trying to be mature and not really being mature at all i do think what he's doing with this film is far more mature than most mainstream sex comedies that would get into the top 10 box at least got it number 10 so it didn't like blow anything away but it, it was actually fairly successful for him especially because the cast was really not as well known then it is more mature than like american pie and like all those sex comedies that would come in the prior decade but i get the like he names him holden after like catcher in the rye they make like references that like really scream like worldly i am i've read a few books and shit but it it just doesn't really work for me anymore they just come off as you know another catcher in the rye phrase uh phony and i just don't think it plays as well as this movie seems to think it does they play as you know far more immature than they have any right to be which i will say the film acknowledges it acknowledges that in a way 
that it, it all kind of comes crashing down because they think they think they're more mature than they really are and it kind of falls apart into pieces so in some ways this film deals with that but i do it does sort of take too long for me to watch them kind of go in this thing that i don't necessarily really like it as much and i kind of feel like a lot of what worked for kevin smith and clerks doesn't work here because those were kind of like accidental things that clerks was like a fluke basically and he's like spending a lot of a career trying to recapture that lightning in the bottle and it was considered at the time he sort of did that with this because this was so much of like his most successful film at the time it did really like bring him back as an independent filmmaker but i think like a lot of it is like he's smarter at using the camera in this that what works for him he's using the same dp david pimer who shot clerks and mall rats and i think they understood like what worked like not moving the camera around too much but it does feel very stagnated it does feel very like 90s and like oh this amazing dialogue will carry us through and it's like it's not that good guys let's calm down it just plays as a very dated kind of piece i don't think how it deals with homosexuality is 100 percent great i don't agree with that i feel like there's that scene with her friends that just doesn't play for me very well and i get that it is trying to really say something about guys feeling like they have to be like the lothario kind of thing or like had more sex than the girls i don't i don't really understand like the whole ego thing that like kind of de deconstructs the relationship it's never been something that's like really bothered me or like really upset me really and i don't really agree with that i don't think that's a reason to like break up with someone and i don't think i think that's like honestly really shitty i like that he is at least talking about that and i think the overall morals of this film actually play very well but like why the purposes of making her gay in this film originally i don't necessarily get because the, the main crux of the whole thing isn't that she's gay it's this other stuff and like why is she even a lesbian and like i don't really understand like what the purpose was it's too stuck in it's like white dude perspective and although it deconstructs that which you know i do think was healthier for the time i don't really get what he was doing with that and i, I kind of wish he just hadn't because i think it probably would have been a lot healthier and maybe made the metaphor work a little better he was just you know some girl who was a little more progressive than he was and they could have challenged that and dealt with something a little more head-on where they're kind of skirting this issue in a way that like plays in too much of like that i don't really know what you're accomplishing with this to be honest like what are you saying by doing that like we really think about it, like you're having like a gay woman fall in love with ben affleck i don't I really don't think that's possible but okay man i don't get what that point is and it kind of doesn't get into the whole thing with the movie because that's not even what bugs him this whole sexual experience you had in high school and then that end scene is like overall it does work as a film and i do sort of like the morals of what it's saying and what it's criticizing and i think that's actually very healthy but in terms of like the kind of log line of it all it, that part doesn't work really and i do find this film kind of obnoxious in that they have to talk about this shit ad nauseum like if it was just a film about making me love these characters which it definitely is not this could be a very different movie but it, in terms of what it is it's just people talking about themselves and their relationships ugh, all the time and like it just you know a basic romantic comedy understands like you have to fall in love with a couple and i don't think kevin smith was as interested in that and it kind of just shows like he's not the kind of filmmaker who's like this is this filmmaker's spy movie or something it's more like a filmmaker who you know i think you know probably could have used a co-writer or someone to give him a bunch more notes or something like that i i, I think he gets us to work within his view as universe i know they wanted to like star cast this out and everything and i think it this is the ben affleck i used to know in the 90s who's very good at these long speeches and ton of dialogue and kevin smith is so wordy in a way that's just like okay dude i get it you have a thesaurus like calm down i don't really ever need to see this movie again i had that funny experience watching it with my parents i definitely felt like i was super mature in the eighth grade now i just look at it as a kind of cautionary tale for like you know dudes who have a sexual hang-up about this sort of thing and like to sort of shame girls or break up with them or any partner really for having these kind of experiences that they didn't know about i don't i don't agree with that i don't think that it's very constructive to do those sort of things i'm glad he maybe made someone somewhere at least think about those choices possibly or at least had that dialogue 
is a lot more healthier than a lot of people were wanting to do with these sex things, which were always weird and gross and like Porky's esque or something. I know originally he there was a version of this that was going to take place in high school. I think that might have been probably a better idea <laughs> other than this comic book thing. He kind of bathes too much in what his interests are, and you can see that he's on he's basically drowning in it by the time we get to Jay and Son Bob the reboot. In here it's like a little more constructive. It feels like he's doing something. I think this film like mostly works, but when you really get into it, it definitely fails at being a good romantic comedy. It's more about being a sex morality play or something. And I guess it works for that. To me, in my perspective now, it's like looking at those play school cars you you know, push around when you're a little kid. And when you're a little kid, they're a lot of fun and you feel like really great about it. But now that I'm older, like there's no way I'm getting in that thing. I, I couldn't fit my legs or anything. That's the way it feels when I'm watching this. It like, didn't feel like good nostalgia. It felt like, like I've definitely grown out of this at this point. <laughs> this is definitely something that was for people in their twenties and is not like a complex argument. It's like, I get this and Eyes Wide Shut are essentially about sort of the same thing as like dudes feeling upset that, you know, ladies have sexual experiences or sexual feelings that don't involve them, which is like, all right guys, just, just chill out. Like Jesus, sometimes the male ego is exhausting and uh, chasing Amy and Eyes Wide Shut is a little more funnier about it, but actually, yeah, what the fuck? That's not even a comedy. Um, or is it? I don't know. I am glad it had that dialogue. I think there are more redeeming qualities of it in this than problematic ones, but honestly, it's a film that you kind of only has an expiration date from like, you know, maybe when you're in high school till when you realize this shit is fucking stupid and you really shouldn't be doing those things. And then I guess you'd agree with it, but I don't know. I give it props for being a little bit more mature of a sex comedy, but it's not mature enough for me to have any sort of like complex mature thoughts about it. It's sort of just a basic narrative that kind of fails in doing the kind of romantic comedy thing that it really should have needed to really sell itself. It could have been a lot more complex. It could have been a lot more interesting, but instead it's sort of hankered down in its own kind of perspective and not really thinking of what you could accomplish so much more with the characters and with this relationship. And if it hadn't gone into all these weird recesses and things like this, this shows kind of Kevin Smith's bigger problem as a writer director is that he can't just sort of look at these things and think of a much more constructive way about what he's doing and like really think out like, well, why is she getting this? Why, what am I saying with her being this? Like, he's not really saying anything. It's just a dumb plot point that made this film far more controversial than it really needs to be. And it probably could have said a lot of these you know, actually kind of good things about sexuality and why this dumbass guy thinks these things better than what it does, but which is muddled by this thing. It sort of muddles the whole conversation and what's the point of that? Like, what what's the point of the homophobia in this? I don't really, you know, and I even also like that Banky, the Jason Lee character, this film is sort of calling him out for doing all those things, which again, in the 90s, they didn't do. So I like how progressive this movie is in some respects, but I think it's non-progressive things. It makes you wonder, why it's even there and you sort of almost want the film to get rid of them so this film could be you know better you kind of root for this film a little bit more than you think you would um but i guess it sort of works in the end but overall i just kind of walk away from it and going like yeah i guess that was a uh, much like in the 90s i think i think we've all moved on and i think i have too from this and i can definitely say um unlike silent bob i don't think i will be chasing amy any longer so if you've seen Chasing Amy and you'd like to talk about it, then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like to.